Hi. Can I ask you first about um, Johnny? I don't think we spoke to you. I think that was announced today. He signed a new contract and how important that is to get him put, to put pen to paper and co commit himself to Wolves. It's very important and we are very pleased. Mm, I think it was even before he returned. And I think um, in the game, you, everybody saw how, how important is the journey for us, um, the concept of our team. So we are delighted that he, he put pen to paper on your contract. And, and you mentioned that he, he's only recently come back. Um, just give us a sense of what, what he brings and, and how much he was missed in that time that he was out. He's a very important player because uh, he has all the routines of the team. He's very competitive. And uh, he's very talented. And when you have a player of such quality out, you, of course, you miss him. Um, and he brings, he brings his side of his game, all the talent that he has, the way he defends. So it's huge for us that, but at the same time, you have to, to be really careful on his return. So he has progressive time of the pitch, so we can, we can get the best out of him. Is this still the case then that you're going to limit his minutes and make sure that he gets back in the way you have done? Yeah, of course. We have to be really careful on our, on our decisions. But we are uh, uh, acting as planned. So everything is feeling good. So we'll decide. Um, can you give us a couple of updates on, um, I think Daniel Pedenza said that he's going to be out five to six weeks and uh, Willie Bolly didn't play the other day. Can you just give us updates on, on them and um, when you might expect them back? They are improving, they are improving, they are doing treatment, but they are not available for probably this, these two games against Southampton, definitely not option for us. So we, we expect him to, to get better and gradually return. But I cannot give you exactly time, time, time schedule on that, I'm sorry. So in terms of the, the squad that you have, first of all, for, for the cup game against Southampton, are you in a position where you're just making sure you've got the right numbers or in a position where you're thinking, well, I've got another big game coming up in a few days' time and I'll maybe juggle with my team a little bit here? <laughs> Don't juggle. <laughs> we decide. We decide. We, we look. Uh, we think. We know our, who is our opponent. We know that we're going to face on Thursday and then again on Sunday. It's a tight schedule. But we have players available, so we'll decide according to, to our plans. And in terms of Southampton um, and their form, they're going through a really difficult spell uh, at the moment. Um, can you put your finger on what, what's going on? Because they, they were playing so well earlier on in the, in the season and things just seem to have taken a turn for them at the moment. They can't seem to get a result. I think in all the teams in the... Uh, we can see it even during this season. All the teams have and have tough, tough moments, um, but that doesn't take away the quality and the, and the, and the talent of the, of the squad of Southampton. I really truly believe that we're going to face a very talented squad, a very good manager, um, and we have to look at our opponent because we know football, anything can change it from one game to the other, so it's a new game. It's not what important is before, just let's compete, and it's the FA Cup, we want to compete well. Oh, just a couple more, more from me. Um, uh, we always like to see if we can get an update on, on Raul Jimenez and his progression. Um, uh, how, how's he getting on? He's doing good. He's doing good. He had, uh, he had um, consultation these days and uh, the results are amazing. So uh, gradually he will, he will progress, but it's too soon yet to, to predict the exact moment. He's working by, his, by himself, but with a good intensity in his training session. So... We are really positive and delighted that everything's going to be okay. And just finally from me, I know we're asking all managers today, um, Facebook uh, have announced that they're going to take further steps in terms of people putting abuse online on Instagram and, and so on. They're going to remove accounts permanently. Do you think it goes far enough? Or do you think in general, every, everyone, football, the tech companies, the, the, the authorities, the police need to take firmer action rather than just removing people's accounts? I, 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 I support, I'm support that all the measures to eradicate definitely uh, and definitively these situations must be, must be taken. But at the same time, it's a matter of, of realizing um, who's behind 
you never know who's behind this situation. So I truly believe that's a difficult job for the authorities to, to identify. Um, but it's a problem that we live in society. So it's easier to, to hide yourself behind something and not show your face. So it's a problem that we have to, to, to try and solve it. But uh, I don't see it coming too soon. Thanks, so thanks. Sorry? No, no, I was just going to say that. Oh, thanks okay. a lot. It's okay. And, uh, it's yes, okay. I'll let someone else jump in now. Thanks a lot, Nuno. I appreciate it. Hi, Nuno. How are you? Hello. Um, just following on from that, really, how big a problem has it been at Wolves, uh, players being abused on social media? It's not a problem of Wolves. It's a problem of society. It's a problem of uh, our community. It's a problem of the situations that we are living. Everybody's in lockdown at home stressed it's a, it's a major problem i will try to do everything i can to eradicate but uh, i don't know if any wolves players have been have been abused uh, i hope not and i and i hope that it doesn't happen to anybody because it's not good you, you haven't had to put your arms around a player yet who's come to you and said this has happened to them Sorry? You haven't had to put your arms around the player yet and who's come to you and says it's happened to them at Wolves? No. 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 Okay. I put my arms around every player that needs, if I can. And uh, uh, the Premier League accepts. Even when you do a meeting to, to even talk about your situations, they don't allow it. So putting arms around. People is becoming harder and harder. Yeah. Um, how difficult is it facing the same team twice in a row? How, as a coach, how difficult is that? It's always difficult because we, we're talking about a very good opponent, a very good team. It's going to be a big challenge for us first on Thursday. And then we think about that we are facing a very good, a very good team. We always say the FA Cup is magical. Um, it hasn't felt quite so magical this year because the fans haven't been around. But I guess you've, you've had a very different journey surely in the last round and now Southampton in this. But if, if you get through it, Wembley is in sight for the second time in, in, what, three or four years for you? First, let's play on Thursday. First on Thursday. Tomorrow. Very tough. Then we think about anything and the rest. But very tough game tomorrow. Step by step. And, and do you... Do you think you've got unfinished business in the tournament because of what happened in that semi-final with Watford? Do you think you've got some sort of unfinished business with the FA Cup? No, we, we finish this. All the business finishes when they end. We don't, we don't look back. Don't look back. We look forward. I want to ask one last question. You're a goalkeeper. How would you have stopped a James Ward-Prowse free kick? Because whenever he gets a... Whenever so I have to get a free kick in and around the edge of the penalty area, we all we all know what's coming. James Ward Prowse is going to take it and invariably he sticks it in the top corner. So as a, as a goalkeeper and, and now as a coach, how do you stop it? How do you stop it? Mm. It's a good wall. And then prevent the goal, the ball to go inside of your goal. And pray. He seems to be very magical, though, with free kicks. So maybe a lot of the playing. He's, and... he's a specialist. He's a very good uh, kicker of the ball. He's shown his quality. And um, because it can happen anywhere, a fall, a fall is a fall. And you have to just prepare yourself, organize your wall properly, and then do your job. Brilliant. Good luck. Thanks, Nuno. Um, Nuno, uh, good to see you. It was lovely to see Johnny back uh, playing again the other day. Uh, and I know you've been building him up carefully for a long time and then played him for 45 minutes. Um, I'm sure players, when they're coming back after a long time out, uh, are really keen to get out and play. Are they receptive to being brought back slowly like that? They understand why, I imagine. They must. They must understand because uh, that's why the decisions makers are are here, the, the doctors, the, the people that really understand. 
and um, we cannot increase um, the, the risk on the situations uh, and the prayer must be uh, must be comfortable uh, with the decision so we can move forward together it's not about pushing it's about going together and tomorrow and that Sunday until we have fully understanding that is um, totally fit uh, we have to be very careful very careful and what you direct me ask about the player the players uh, understand they understand because we are talking about not only their present but their future so they should understand in the case of johnny he truly does, truly does it Yes, I'm sure uh, uh, he's obviously a, a very intelligent, mature player. So is that a combination of, you've obviously got a lot of uh, sports science and the coaches and the, uh, and all the data, and then you talk to the player themselves and, and, and come to, a, you know, sensible decisions on that sort of thing. Is that how it works? Yeah, basically, yes. Plus, the player himself has, has uh, access to all the data. So... Yes, he can compare himself, what he does in the training session, what he did previous, the, the injury, how many Ks he do, the intensity, the high running, the, the, the load and all these things. They have themselves, they have access to, to all this data. So everything, everybody together is when we decide. I see. Um, while they've been recuperating um, just lately, I know you've been able to keep them, um, as we've seen with some of the photographs that have come out, you've been able to keep them as part of the of the bubble um, and keep them close to the rest of the squad, even with all these protocols. That must have been quite tricky sometimes. Yes, the protocols are very tricky. The protocols are very tricky. And um, I think in the right moment, everybody will talk about that. But what's happening is... It's really difficult. It's really difficult in all the protocols. Um, so we are delighted to, to keep on working. We are delighted to, to compete and, and, uh, and allow people to, uh, to see the games on TV. But at the same time, some, some things are, are really difficult to, to overcome. And tricky and patience. The players are being really patient on the situation, cooperative with the situations, trying to follow. But at the same time, we have a team to prepare we have things to do but um, it was always our decision that the players that are injured even if it's long term always stay with us to have them around and, and then to at the same time allow them to have a, a safe environment or that we can socialize and be together it's fundamental for the recovery of the player it will be a huge mental mistake to to isolate it will be I cannot even think so I'll not even do it. I understand. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, Nuno. Um, I just wanted Hello. to do another, another quick check on the on the team news. Would I be right to assume that Ryan out, Eight Nuri, and uh, Mark Howe are, are still still unavailable at the moment? Sorry. Uh, Ryan Eight Nuri and uh, Mark Mark Howe are they still unavailable for the time being? Would I be right to assume? Ah, Marcel. Marcel. Marcel, thank you. <laughs> My apologies. <Sorry. laughs> I was listening to you and I said, Mark, I don't have a Mark. A, a soft mark. C, right. Good um, yeah, yeah, they are getting they, they, better. They are getting better. They are getting better. Um, Ryan is available to join the squad tomorrow. Uh, Marcel, not yet. Okay. And, and, and nothing else fresh on the injury front from the last game now? I think we have enough problems already. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Much appreciated. Thank you. Any other broadcast questions for today at all? Jake? Hi, Nuno. It's Jake here from ITV. Hope you're well. Um, first of all, Nuno, how highly do you regard the FA Cup as part of your season? It's the next game. The next game is always the more highly rated game in our lives. And do you see it as an opportunity to get into Europe? Tough game tomorrow. Very tough game to go. And this is what we have to think, focus on, on our tasks tomorrow. Because it's going to be a very demanding game for us. And what challenges will Southampton possess? A lot of challenges. Very good team. Very organised, very competitive. We faced them before. Um, a clear idea how to play the game. That will require the best of, of us. 
And obviously, two years ago, you got to the semi-finals of this competition. Will you use those experiences, you and the players, positively to continue um, on this run? We can take experiences uh, from all the, all the games, not only the good ones and the good moments. The bad moments is also, also teach you a lot. So it's getting all this experience and, and ready for, for tomorrow.